I wanted to show you a river where the water is so high, you know, it's obviously got a couple feet yet before it reaches the bottom of the bridge, and it should never reach the bottom of the bridge. What happens is there's a culvert right there, and you can't see it. And, I mean, it's like crazy big culvert. So all the ditches right now have water in them, and it pretty much has backfed into all the ditches and swales. So all the land around here, everyone's going to share retaining water until the river catches up. Now this river eventually ends up in Lake St. Clair, okay? But it's got a ways to go. We've had three inches of rain. A lot of times you get trees and things that are floating. They'll uh, block up the flow and that affects it even more so. But I wanted to use this to help teach everybody how this works. We talk about water back feeding in the properties. I put the drone up so that I could show you what this river does when it swells up. So the river has swelled up to the point to where the ditches cannot deposit water into the river anymore. Everything just stops. The water stops moving. Actually, what happens next, it gets worse. Every single culvert that's under every single drive lets water in. That's the problem. And the longer we have high water, when we have these big rain events, the more property floods. So the river is to the right of the road. There's that road that you can see that's snowed covered. And you can see all the property that is flooded. And the ditch is filled right to the top. Now that ditch is a giant ditch. It's really big. The closer you get to the rivers, the bigger the ditch becomes. Upstream, the ditch gets shallower and shallower. So you can see all the property that's flooded here. This is because the river swelled up and the water's been backing up through all the culverts and all the driveways. Anywhere you drive by near a river or lake and you see a culvert pipe, the water is intended to drain to the river and or lake to be deposited. When it backs up, it just works in reverse. So that's how you have to kind of think when you're trying to protect the property. So I put the drone up just to see how bad it was as well as if the property that I was working to protect, if there was anything that I needed to do to ensure that the water wasn't going to make it on this farm. So I will show you that here in this drone flight. Now I dug a pond and a canal and you guys as subscribers, I took you along for that. But now we're gonna connect the dots. So here's that man-made lake that we turned that pond into with the canal. And you see the road going around it? Well, that road going around it does two things. One, it provides a high and dry road. Two, it's keeping all that flood water out of that farm. Look at that. So you guys always ask for results. You want to see the results in what it is I do. I don't have anything that's better than this. I'm battling a sleeping giant. When this river ends up going over its banks like this. Now, this was a detention area. It's doing its job. It's storing water that's coming off of this farm since it can't be deposited in the ditch and being uh, taken downstream to the river. So, as you can see, the detention pond's holding quite a bit of water. Once the river starts to finally recede and starts going down and the water starts moving again, the ditch starts to move, uh, the property drains, all this water on this property drains, 